Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm Yamik, of course, and today we're going to be talking about uh, toxic mothers, narcissistic mothers, or toxic narcissistic mothers. All right, you guys, it's going to be a doozy. Here we go. All right, so the first thing I wrote down, I wrote down a couple of points about narcissistic toxic mothers, and I'm only speaking from my experience and what I've been through, and this is my truth, not your truth, so just sit back and relax, and maybe you'll resonate with this. All right, so the first one I wrote down was, you're always the one to have to apologize. This is probably the most popular one um, that I can pr probably like you know relate to because I was always the one having to apologize, even when I wasn't in the wrong. It just was sad. And the only reason why I was apologizing, even though I wasn't in the wrong, because I wanted to be accepted, of course, by the woman who gave birth to you, you know what I mean? So I bit the bullet and I said, you know what, I'm not wrong, but I'm going to apologize just to try to keep the peace and try to, you know, have a relationship. But what I didn't know was, is that narcissistic people or toxic people, period, they're not going to apologize. They are not going to see their fault. And if they know they're wrong, they're definitely not going to apologize. They're going to like try to throw it back on you, make you seem like a crazy person. And one thing that that creates is a lot of hostility in the child. So I just want to read this little excerpt that I got from an article. A controlling mother always creates insecure attachment in a relationship where the male child has not been validated emotionally. Very often he can show aggressive or hostile behavior. This is a characteristic that it usually distinguishes the male child from the female child. They use guilt or money to control you. This is one she used on me like, <laughs> let me tell you, okay? Even as an adult, your parent might still be controlling you by giving you expensive gifts and money and then expecting you to do something for them in return. If you fail to do what they want you to do in return, they will try to make you feel guilty about it because all they've done for you. Now, my mom used to call me to, you know, come to her house to do certain little you know, odds and ends, you know, organize closets, clean my sister's room. Mind you, she's freaking at an age where she can clean her own damn room and organize her room when she'd be doing it herself and she would call me to do it. But as I look back on it, that was a way to control me, whether she was paying me or not, whether it was a job she was paying for, paying for me to do or not. First of all, she would underpay me. <laughs> then she would, I would have to pay my way back home. She lived all the way in Long Island. I had to pay my way back home. You know how expensive that is. But that was a sense of control because she knew I was not working at the time and she knew that I would be back eventually to do another odd and end job for her for, you know, dirt cheap, you know, and then send me back on my way. And then, you know what I'm saying? So it was like a control thing. And I started realizing, like, you can call me when you need, you know, an odd and end job done. But I see on Facebook, you have a party, you have a barbecue at your house. I'm not invited. <laughs> People that she knows that don't like me are invited or there. She's laughing with them, congregating with them like, what? And she knew I would be on social media and see these things and how much it would hurt me. She didn't care. That's the cruelty of toxic mothers and narcissistic mothers. She does not care. They don't care about your feelings. All they care about is the image that they want everyone else to see and how they are a good mother. A thing about narcissistic people too, they want to control the narrative. So for so long I was silent. I wasn't always doing YouTube videos. I wasn't always on your social media. And when I was, they would call me crazy when I would write statuses because they'd be like, oh no, he's a drug addict. Oh no, he's this. Oh no, he's that. Because Tracy said. Narcissistic mothers, toxic moms, they hate your freedom. Any little inch of freedom or any in inch of independence, they want to mm, smash it and make you feel like, oh no, you can't grow. You can't do this. Even though they pretend like they want you to. They're never really excited for your success, whether it be small or big or tiny. Coming from where I've come from, I've come a long way. I went to rehab five times. Five times. i come a long way, people. And my last stint in rehab was 2016, I believe, in May. So I think that's four years clean or some shit. I don't even know. I don't even count. But you would think my mom has not once called me and said, how you doing? How's sobriety? How's that life? And she didn't ask because she didn't care. As long as I wasn't around her and her people that, you know, she talked about me with, it was okay. As long as I was at bay, it was okay. As long as I was in the Bronx, it was okay. As long as I wasn't around them, it was all right. Another thing toxic mothers, narcissistic mothers do is they dismiss your negative feelings. So if you have like any doubt, like say like ask if, are people talking about me? Or like, am I being talked about? What are you talking about? Ain't nobody talking about you. Okay, girl. Another thing I notice is if someone is talking to you about someone else, granted, not granted, they're talking to you 
They're talking about you to that same person or to other people. And I had to take note about it. I was like, why is she talking about my brother or this one or that one? My mom would call me and I would know how the conversation would go depending on the tone of her voice. You know what I mean? I was just in my power then, didn't even know it, but I can tell. I can almost like I was reading a script and I'd be like, okay, she's gonna say this, she's gonna say that, and then we're gonna hang up. Did you find a job? Were you looking? Did you go out today? Did you go out to find a job? Not, hey, how are you? Are you emotionally okay? Did you sleep well tonight? What did you eat? Um, how you doing? Did you go out and get some fresh air? How you feeling? You know what I'm saying? Not job, 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 job. She's so concerned about the outside view of her parenting skills instead of like her actual parenting skills. Like she's so concerned about what others would think about, and it doesn't even matter. Like, how about how your child feels? How about that? How narcissists kind of like switch it up on you and they try to like say, oh no, I wasn't talking about you. I was confiding in people because I was concerned and yeah, I told them your business. Bitch, you was talking about me. I'm sorry, not bitch. <laughs> and she did a good job at that, about, you know, controlling the narrative and um, not allowing me to have a voice because how can anyone listen to me when she's already controlled and warped their mind about who I am? And then when I would ask, like, you know, why was I invited to, you know, said barbecue or said, you know, brunch or whatever the case may be. Well, how would you get out there? And how would you get the same way I got there when you wanted me to clean your house, scrub your floors, clean your refrigerator, X, Y, Z, one, two. I also want to touch on what I said before about never excited for your successes. Narcissistic mothers are never excited for even a small success. Um, at 16, I was Mona Scott Young's intern. At 18, I was interning for Morley Simmons and Russell